two experienced academics and practitioners, I'll, I'll say advocates of uh, social business who have taken it to another level. So we, we, we are really uh, glad to have you uh, uh, with us uh, this, this afternoon, this morning, wherever you are, to engage us. Let me start first with um, uh, Professor Enrico. I think um, uh, we want you to help us understand this social business uh, cities. And from your experience, what is it? You have a first-hand experience with that. So tell us uh, what is these social business cities and what are the social business cities program that we can learn from? Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question, Dr. Jonas. And uh, good evening, everyone. It's uh, always a pleasure being here with you and sharing our experiences. So the concept of, of social business city is quite simple. Actually, uh, if we think about uh, our cities, um, sometimes uh, people that want to start social businesses don't have a real opportunity to do so. I mean, they find a lot of barriers and difficulties. So the idea of social business city is actually to, to create a city where people that want to address a social problem or environmental problem through social business uh, can find an enabling ecosystem, so a system where they are supported. And this can mean incubation, can mean uh, culture, can mean working with public authorities and so on. Um, so the basic idea is that um, we start analyzing what is missing in a city uh, and we try to fill these gaps uh, through the social business city program. And if you apply and you implement the social business city program uh, according to certain set of criteria, then you will have a social business city. So we started in 2012 uh, with a pilot program in Pistoia, which is near Florence, uh, doing different activities. Uh, and now we are also continuing with our social business city. And the same concept uh, was uh, applied in Barcelona. So a total different city, because for those of you that don't know Pistoia, Pistoia is a small town of uh, 100,000 people while Barcelona has 2.5 million people uh, uh, inhabitants. So it's a very different situation. And they apply the same process. So they analyze the situation, they saw the gaps, and then they uh, actually implemented the program, and then they were certified as social business city. And the same did Taiwan, where Mark Shen uh, and his team did a wonderful work, and he will speak about it uh, later on, so I will not anticipate it. So the idea is that uh you have to think very practically when, when you think about social business cities there is a lot of theory and scientific research uh underneath the concept of enabling ecosystem but then the actions are really practical so and the most important thing is that it's a program that you actually have to co-plan with different um stakeholders of the city and then hopefully implement also with different stakeholders. And at the end, you will have to evaluate. So as a UNOS Center University of Florence, we are uh, at the moment the evaluators of this program. Uh, so we evaluated the one in Barcelona and we evaluated the one in Taiwan with the objective on one side of providing a certification which actually the process has been done properly. Uh, on the other side also is to learn uh, from the different experiences because these three cities, which apply the same methodology, um, actually are quite different. You know, Pistoia, Barcelona, and Taiwan, it's totally different also on cultural levels you know, and also history concerning the social economy. So this is very interesting to learn. As Professor Yunus was mentioning, there are also other social business cities, uh, other experiences around like Wiesbaden, Fukuoka. Uh, they uh, got to the same point using different paths. So when we say social business city program, we mean the program that we elaborated uh, based on our research as a UNO social business center. Um, so this is in a nutshell, uh, the social business city program. And in Pistoia, we started in 2012, but we are continuing uh, because the uh, two foundations there, Fondazione Cassis Prime Pistoia and Pesce and Fondazione Raggi Luce are passionate 
of the program of the incubation program you have social businesses so they are continuing with this endeavor uh, which is good because if they would stop actually there wouldn't be any more enabling ecosystem in Pistoia so there wouldn't be a social business city anymore Thank you, Enrico. You, you, you mentioned uh, that uh, social business city brings different stakeholders together. And um, that also comes with its own uh, challenges of, of working with different stakeholders. Uh, can you tell us about some of the challenges that you know, comes as you try to build this social business city? And um, also, what, what are the key learning from your experience uh, uh, with, with the Pistoia? Well, I mean, the, there are a lot of challenges, of course. This is not simple programs uh, because you have to get on board with the city council. Then you have to find financer. Then you have to find partners. And, and not in every uh, case, in every city, you have people that want to work with you. Uh, so maybe uh, the first key lesson is that not everyone wants to work with you. Uh, so... It, you just have to adapt. Um, so we, have, we're, we're, we were actually very lucky in Pistoia and the, our partners in uh, Barcelona, Tandem Social, were very good. So they were able to create a group of stakeholders, but uh, it's almost impossible to involve everyone, okay? Uh, every stakeholder in the city, especially when you are operating in an ecosystem where you have a lot of different actors, okay? Well, you are not uh, starting on a blank paper. Actually, usually there are a lot of things going on already. So you have to find the way to not compete, but cooperate, which is sometimes quite challenging. Um, so this is, I, I would say, try finding the way to cooperate with more organizations possible in the city is something which is very challenging and time consuming. So this is something that has also a kind of a weight, I would say, on the budget and the human resources you will have. Um, and then there is also another lesson that I learned in Pistoia is that usually, you know, we think that social business entrepreneurs are, um, let's say, all willing to cooperate with each other, while, you know, it depends really on how the whole system is built and uh, the comp Competing competition between them. So sometimes you also have to understand that there might be competition, a, a strong competition between social businesses. And so some of them will not want to take part to some activities if they are also the, the competitors. You know? So these are some small uh, lessons which are uh, quite interesting, I would say, when we relate it also to the uh, academic literature, which sometimes idealizes, you know, some mm -hmm. uh, the figure of the social business entrepreneur. Uh, while I mean, they are entrepreneurs, so they have to compete uh, after all. So, uh, but these are the main challenges, I would say. Uh, uh, but the main advice I would give is not to overthink when trying to actually implement these activities. To really be practical and find the practical solutions and not build something which is too difficult. You know, sometimes the solutions are pretty straightforward. So it's like going to high schools and telling them about social business, going to universities, telling them about social business and creating the incubation program. So these are very simple things that actually have a huge impact and difference. Thank you. The solutions are very simple. I think to go the simple way and very, to be very practical, in uh, in building the social business city, I think the great benefit is that it creates an enabling environment for social uh, business to to flourish. I think that's all we are looking for. So, despite the the challenges of bringing many actors together, there is a great benefit in uh, in creating this social uh, business city, as you have said. Now, let me shift to to you, Dr. Shen, uh, about your experience in building a social business. Okay, my experience. In Taiwan, right. how was it? Okay, uh, I have to thank Enrico first because I think I learned the idea of social business city, I think about five, six years, 
five, six years ago. You know, when I attend a global social business summit, I learn the idea. And um, then I like this idea because, because the YSBC at NCU, we just established about, I think 2014, still very young. And uh, we also think about how to, you know, because in university, actually, the only thing we can do actually is to provide education for our students, right? But I think that's not enough because students still need to go outside, you know, to find opportunity, you know, to know the social problem and uh, engage with stakeholders and think about in innovative way to solve social problems. So we need to connect with every component of the city because um, I think that's very important. So I think, so I like this idea. So when I back to Taiwan, I start communicating with the, the Taoyuan city government. Uh, Taoyuan city government is uh, one of the six municipal municipal city in Taiwan. Uh, uh, it, the population is 2.2 million. It's a big city as well. And uh, it's more like a portal city in Taiwan because when you arrive in Taiwan, the first city you fit is Taoyuan city. So, you know, Taoyuan city used to be only focused on industry development. There are many industry parks there, okay? But somehow Taiwan city government want to do something different. We cannot just focus on, you know, economic development. We need to somehow find a way to balance, you know, to think about maybe we should focus more on social social side, the social impact. So I spent, uh, actually I spent a lot of time communicating with the city government. And uh, so in 2017, they agreed to establish social business center, you know, in Taoyuan city. I think this is the only still now, still the only city government supported, you know, center. They have funding, they have staff, they have full-time staff, you know, you know, manage the social business affair in Taiwan city. This is still the only city in Taiwan have this kind of organization. I think that's very important. So first thing they, I want, I think I have to persuade to commit, make commitment, you know, because if you cannot commit, if it's just a project, because the other city, usually they just have a funding project, for example, five million, NTD funding project this year, you know, to support social business enterprise, a social business or social enterprise. I think that's enough because it's not a commitment, it's just an add-on. So if we have, because we have election, for example, this year we have election. So when city mayor change, the policy could change as well. So the city, I think the social business city is very important is if we agree to enroll the social business city program, it's more like the city government endorse this kind of approach, then no matter which mayor change, I think the organization is there, right? And the commitment is there, okay? So sustainable, I think it's going to make the ecosystem more sustainable, okay? So so the next thing I, I, I communicate with, with the city government to think about, so why not we are join, we join the social business city because we have seen a many approach to persuade them. This is important to them. So if any participant are interested about this, I think I, I'm willing to share. Okay, so, uh, so for me, I think uh, we start, as you can see the video, we start, uh, finally, we, the city come agree. So they are willing to commit because the city mayor, I think his background very important because uh, he's, uh, he graduated from social, social work department, you know, from National Taiwan University. So he is kind of very social driven, you know, social, social mind. So I see, he also thinks social enterprise, social business very important. So I, he also think this is uh, maybe uh, something he can promote if you want to react. I <laughs> think you have to say something, you know, touch their heart, yeah. This it could be something they can promote when Ray, when he want to react for a city mayor next time. So I think, so th this is very important. You have to say something that uh, attract the city government. This is important to them, not just for personally, but also for the city. Okay. So finally they agreed to join the program in 2018, I remember. So in that time, I think we also invite a, 
the deputy seer, uh, deputy city mayor, you know, to join the ceremony. We also invite the delegate from Barcelona. We learn from each other. And we make commitment. I think it's very important. We need to make commitment officially, mm -hmm. openly, you know. So the city government agreed to do this. And we do annual affiliation, you know. So we're also saying Enrico, every time we have to write an annual report to report the progress. So Enrico will uh, tell us the uh, the suggestion, the feedback, you know, what we can improve next year. So we just, uh, it's more like uh, the communication suggestion. So city, city government can also learn from each other. I think it's very important. City, I think social business city program also very important is to connecting, connecting stakeholder of the ecosystem and the provide sustainable way to to support the social business social social business development in within city. As Inco mentioned about the competition. You know, because social business may have competition with each other, right? But we, when we have, when the city government endorses social business city program, so the government provide resource, no one will argue, you know, so everyone is fair, you know, so we provide, it's just, we define the rule, define the, define the, the, the regulation, you know, so we define the, the funding program, everyone can apply, okay, so I think, if the city can initiate this kind of approach, I think it's going to be a, a very, I have to say, minimize the risk of competition. You know, so they just uh, do their best. They can learn from each other. So that's really why each year we have the demo show, demo program. So uh, social business in the city, they, have, they can learn from each other. They can learn from each other. And we have enough resource Actually, we have very enough funding resource to support social business development in Taoyuan City. We just don't have enough thing, you know, to become social business. So, so this is what I want to share with you uh, so far. Okay. <laughs> uh, Dr. Shen, that is very interesting. You, you, you get insisting on commitment, getting uh, the city council, getting stakeholders. Yes of having this social business city. Uh, mm -hmm. My question to both of you now, tell us briefly, what difference do you see in the social business uh, cities uh, in, the, in the ecosystem, how it functions com compared to those that are not social business cities? So that's to inspire us to say, how, why should we embrace social business cities? Okay, I, I, I will start. Can go first. Okay, go ahead. Now we start. Well, uh, I mean, first of all, uh, I would like to say that um, in the present situation, there are already cities that are social business cities without knowing that they are social business cities. Okay, uh, so there are already cities also in Italy that are quite really advanced on what they're doing. For example, Turin, Milan, uh, they're really advanced. So they, they already have an enabling system for social business, social enterprises. So uh, I, I wouldn't uh, compare, for example, Pistoia, with, which is a social business city, with the opportunities you have in Milan or Turin, because there's totally different situation. Uh, but let's say uh, the difference you have uh, in similar cities. So if we take other cities like Pistoia and we compare Pistoia with them, um, I, I would say that the difference uh, is in the opportunities that you offer to uh, normal people uh, because the, the big difficulty uh, in social business is not to find social businesses to scale or the champions. You will always find the champion. The, the real difficult part is to bring social business to normal people. So people that have a day job and then they want to start a social business and they're actually risking a lot. So these people are not big companies, they're not multinational companies, they're normal people like us. So um, the social business city brings opportunity to normal people. Okay, so this is 
the main difference. So if you are a student, if you are someone, an unemployed person, if you are someone working normal job, wants to change life in the social business city, you have someone that helps you. In other cities, mm-hmm. it might really be really difficult and sometimes almost impossible because the transaction costs uh, for doing so and the risks are too much you know, for, for certain types of uh, stakeholders. So I, I would say this is the, the main difference. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so maybe I share. Yes, uh, as I mentioned before, I think from, from my experience, I think um, with the Social Business City program, actually we can build a more sustainable mechanism to support social businesses. Because as I observe other cities in Taiwan, they don't have this kind of uh, standard or pro- social business city program. Usually, um, I have to say, they have different approach each year, you know. So they, can con- they cannot continue the policy. So if we have the social business city program, then the objective is very clear. We have to go, we have to build a system, a sustainable system, and we want to, we want to build more social business city in the city. So it's a clear, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an ambitious goal. You tell people, this is what we want to do. The very clear goals. Secondly, I think it's also good for the city. We call, we call city branding, you know, <laughs> city branding. So you can, for me, for I think like the city, Taiwan city, actually they publish a lot of news <laughs> from this. They also try to uh, in, attract more social business to establish in Taiwan, not to other city. So it can build a, like a Taiwan used to be a big industrial park, you know, about many electronic or um, different industry, but how you want to build a ecosystem that attract social business also established here to build a community, a, a even social business industry park here. So I think two, I think one year ago, they also have a social business, um, I say how to say, social business uh, gathering place in uh in 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 in, Zhong, in Taoyuan. So I think this is very important, you know, to for city to to really use social business to solve their social problem. Mm-hmm. Thank you. But what both of you are telling us in terms of the benefits is that social business city provide opportunities for people who want to embrace social business define more uh, support city then uh, if you want to start something you'll have uh, people who are able to support you to grow a business which uh, sometimes is the, the struggle of many people who want to start social business and you you mentioned that Hashem about the uh, building a sustainable system I think that's again a very important point that you it help us to see not only the present, but also the future, moving, having a sustainable solution for our uh, social problem in, uh, in our city. I think those are inspiring things. So you mentioned about the branding. It's, it's, it gives a good name for it to the city, you know, a social business city. It's, 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 let me say it's a clean name for a city that also, uh, you know, it's good for even for the uh, city authorities to know this is a social business. So there is a great benefit uh, in, in embracing social uh, business city, as you, you are telling us. Now, I want to take us to another point on the role of the youth. Tadashem, you mentioned uh, that uh, uh, we should not only educate youth, we should connect them to social uh, reality. I think you, you, you mentioned that. Now, you are an academician. What's the role of the YBC in in contributing to these social business cities? Do you, what do you see at their role? Uh, my question? My, my question is, how do you see the role of the YSBCs in building the social business cities? Because you mentioned that the, the youth are not supposed to be taught only, they are to be connected to the social reality. Do they have a role to play and what's their role? 
Okay. So because before the social business city program, before the social business center, I think when we teach social business, actually most of the students just sit in class. I think this is not good. I think we have mm -hmm. to go outside. So social university students should go outside to really predict what they then do in the class. Okay, so for the, for the youth, I think it's an opportunity to connect with, with the social business city program. We can connect with other stakeholders in the city. For example, the, the beneficiaries, right? And, for, and they also have the opportunity to really, uh, because the help of the city government, they can get involved with the social problem, right? Because the city oh. government actually can give them opportunity to access something probably they cannot access uh, by themselves, right? So additionally, because the, now the, the founding of the social, social business city in Taiwan City actually found the Bureau of the Youth, Youth Affair, you know. So the, which means students also can apply funding from the Bureau of Youth Affair affair if they want to start up social business in Taiwan city you know so through this kind of magazine that we attract students you want to go out don't be afraid you know because the city government can provide you the resource not just the people resource but also the money resource the university provide you the knowledge you know yeah. just go there we have we can support you you know we also have the international advisor and also we have the international connection. We can help you, you know, if you want to learn something from others. We provide an advisor, we provide a workshop, we provide trainings. So students just go ahead, they can learn from university. So I think for social business city program for use, very important is this is a platform for them to connect you know, connect with other stakeholders more effectively. Of course, we can do without by ourselves, but we, if we don't have this platform, I think it's going to be very time consuming. We need lots of communication because when, if we call the city government, no one will help me. They will transfer the phone to many bureaus. You know, it's very, very different. So, but with the program, the city government, they, every year they have an allocate budget you know, for the center, for the program. Even next year, actually, we start planning. When they plan next year's city social business uh, budget, actually, sometimes they will contact, consult with us about what, how much, and uh, what kind of we can do together. So also think about what kind of, what kind of activities students can participate. I think this, and not only my university, but also other university in Taoyuan City, because Taoyuan City have lots of university here. So actually, we also engage with other universities, so students can learn from each other. Okay, so this is what I think. Uh, this is a platform very, very uh, good, you know, to for the development of social business. Of course, I think uh, the challenge is we. I think we have to keep motivating students. You keep motivating youth because I have to say most of the students at NCU they, they have found good family, not they their income, they're they're very good. So we have to motivate them. You know, why we need to do social business. As Professor Yuni said, do it with joy. I think most of the time we don't want to push them to do social business. We want to them to learn to do social business by their by their heart. Okay. So this is what I think. <laughs> Okay, I will come back to you, uh, Dr. Shem, I want a concrete example later, but let's hear from uh, Dr. Enrico, uh, what, what is, how do you see the role of uh, YSBC in, uh, in creating this, uh, social, uh, social uh, business cities program? Well, uh, the Union Social Business Centers actually uh, can play a fundamental role. Um, if we think they are placed uh, in universities, uh, so they have a kind of an authority uh, and um, importance in the ecosystem, you know, universities. So, and they often uh, tend to uh, be too close uh, towards 
uh, external relations. Usually, usually universities uh, educate, uh, train uh, students, uh, but they don't mix too much with the ecosystem, you know, so they don't provide so many opportunities uh, to touch the reality of what's going mm -hmm. on. So uh, I think YSBCs, uh, since they are created to promote social business, of course, they have inside, I would say in their blood, to, to, to connect with different worlds. Uh, and the social business city can be the platform, as uh, Professor Chen was saying, to actually uh, put together um, different stakeholders uh, and create opportunities for students uh, and create social businesses all together. And if we see it from the perspective of a UNO center, the social business city is a good way to start their activities. You know, many, many different events we discuss, uh, some UNO centers, cl they uh, claim that they don't do much, they have uh, different difficulties in funding funds, you know? And the social business is actually is an already kind of ready platform on which you can build your activities in your cities based on research that the UNO Center can do, you know? So this is something I, I, I would like more UNO Centers to do, be involved in because it's, I wouldn't say the perfect program, but it's a good program uh, to begin with, because it gives visibility to the UNOS centers, it provides opportunities to students, it engages all stakeholders and brings something useful to society, which is, I would say, the objective of the university after all, you know? The objective of the university is not just being self-referential and publishing scientific paper, which is a nice, these are nice, but we have a, a, an important role in changing society for the better. And this is the connection also to the 3.0 uh, city that Professor Yunus was mentioning at the beginning, which is the connection between the social business city and the 3.0 city. Social business city is providing the city the tools, one of the tools, to get to the 3.0 city with zero unemployment, zero poverty, uh, zero carbon emission. So this is the main goal, I would say, for all cities. Uh, but you have to have the tools. So the social business city is the one of the tools mm -hmm. you can use as a city to reach this kind of uh, long-term goals. And UNO centers should embrace it, I would say. Very powerful word that UNO centers should embrace it. Um, I think uh, uh, the social business cities program uh, from what I'm, here, I'm hearing is also changing the way of teaching is done uh, from the traditional uh, approach now to connecting its students to their reality in their cities so that they're able to address that and build their social business. I think uh, we, we have heard a lot of wisdom from you. What I want just in 30 seconds, each one of you, for all those people listening to us, what's your word of wisdom for us? Uh, let me start with Tashan. Dr. Mark Shen. Oh, oh. Oh, Star Wars for me? Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I think it's just, you know, I, I know it's very challenging to do this, but I think just do it and without thinking too much. I think uh, do it. I think even either it's succeed or fail, but I think you will learn something from this journey. That's what I should want to share. Thank you. Well, I, I'm quite uncomfortable with words of wisdom as I don't define myself a wise man. So uh, I, I also would embrace what Professor Shen was saying. I mean, uh, sometimes as academics, uh, we tend to uh, overthink and to make things more complicated, while sometimes, you know, we just have to get out a bit of our, of our comfort zone of uh, research and uh, academic circles and try to get our hands dirty a bit. Uh, and we will see that actually, this will be benefit a lot our teaching and also our research as well. So uh, my advice is try, and if you fail, no problem, please you try it, you know, so this is. Thank you. Your last words is, let's get our hand dirty. Let's just go to try it and uh, we learn from it. Thank you very much for 
for in sharing your experience with us. I think we have learned a lot. Uh, I give back to Zenat uh, to conclude the session. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Jonas, Dr. Mark Shen, Dr. Enrico Testi. Uh, this has been a great conversation. I think I myself learned a lot on the Social Business City program, and it's really wonderful. So I thank you and congratulate both of you for making uh, the Social Business City program possible in different cities, in Taiwan City and in also Italy um, and Barcelona and uh, uh, in Taiwan, where you have assisted uh, Mr. Enrico. So, and I think our YSBCs and other academics or anyone watching should take inspiration from them and have more uh, such uh, social business cities. I know, um, I'm sure Dr. Jonas, you're also inspired to hopefully have one in Kenya. Uh, in Nairobi <laughs> can be a social business city. We have quite a lot of YSBCs there and why not get together and make Nairobi a social business city? I think we can start with that. That'll be our first social business city in um, Africa. And I'm sure Enrico, Dr. Mark Shen and all our social business business city um, colleagues will all be able to help you and guide you uh, make that possible so uh, we look forward to having many more social business city in the years to come and you know center and all our colleagues from all over the world will be able to assist I'm sure to make it possible so thank you very much to make this great conversation possible Dr. Jonas and to both of our speakers today we appreciate your time and efforts um, and your um, dedicatedness uh, dedication sorry uh, for social business. Um, thank you very much again. Uh, we conclude the this uh, lecture session here, but before that, we will play a slideshow on our upcoming Global Social Business Summit and the Global Social Business Academia Conference, which is coming up. Uh, this will be our first uh, live event since the pandemic hit us. Uh, it's going to be happening in Turin in Italy on November 7th and 8th. So these are live events. You will also be able to see uh, Zoom tele uh, sorry, telecast of it on our social media. We will uh, share the links of where you can watch it. So please join us. Uh, we would love to have you live there. Our The slideshow will play um, how you can register for the event, GSPS. And of course, please keep an eye on our social media on how to watch it online. So thank you very much again. Now I request the tech team to play the slides for our upcoming event. Uh, audience members, please feel free to join us in Turin or also online for watching the events that are coming up in November. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Bye-bye.